look at one, as one other aspect of homeostasis before we finish this section, and we're going to look at acid-base balance. Now, it's very crucial that acid-base balance of the plasma is maintained. Too much acid, it becomes acidotic, life-threatening. Too much alkaline becomes alkalotic, also life-threatening. And it's the kidney primarily which regulates the acid-base balance of the blood to maintain the pH. So let's think about this. The pH scale, you probably remember, goes from 1, which will be a very strong acid, to 7, which is neutral, to 14, which will be a very strong alkaline. And blood pH is around about 7.4. Blood is slightly alkaline. Now the blood itself is an effective buffer. A buffer is something which can absorb, uh, say, hydrogen ions, uh, things that make a solution acid, without changing the pH. But eventually it will be overwhelmed and there will be change in the pH. So it's very essential that the kidney regulates it. So an acid, an acid is a product which will release free hydrogen ions, H plus ions, in water. So when there's hydrogen ions in the blood, the pH will fall. So the kidney can secrete hydrogen ions selectively. So if the blood becomes too acidic, the kidney will secrete hydrogen ions, therefore the blood will become less acidic. And it can selectively excrete hydrogen ions to main, maintain blood pH at the optimum 7.4 level. And the kidney can also secrete or retain bicarbonate, the HCO3 sorry, the, the HCO3 minus ion, bicarbonate ions, excreting those selectively. So if more of these are retained, pH will increase 7.4. To, to, uh, it, it will the, the number will become higher. The more bicarbonate ions are retained, the more alkaline the blood will be. The less bicarbonate ions that are retained, the more acid that the blood will be. So acid-base balance, homeostatically maintained by the kidney. So that concludes uh, most of the things I wanted to say about renal physiology. So just to finish, uh, I want to leave you some images to take away with you. And what we're going to do is look at some uh, kidney tissue under the microscope. And we'll see the uh, renal corpuscles, that's the Bowman's capsule and the gemelli. And we'll see some tubules so it can help us in our conceptualization of what we've been talking about and what we've been thinking about. On this slide, we're looking at a magnified cross-section of renal cortex. And I think you can see very clearly that it contains renal corpuscles. Let's just uh, move the slide around and maybe we'll see a few more of these. Yep, there we are, renal corpuscles in the cortex of the kidney. So each of these is a renal corpuscle. Well, you'll see there's lots of other structures here and these are actually the different uh, tubules going up and down into the plane of the, uh, the screen from uh, renal corpuscles higher up and uh, lower down uh, in, the, in the kidney. 
So the renal corpuscles. This bit in the middle is the gemellulus. And around the outside we have Bowman's capsule. So a renal corpuscle is the gemellulus, the ball of capillaries, and Bowman's capsule. So here at higher magnification, I think now we can clearly see the glomerulus <coughs> and the capsule round about it. And also the different tubules going up and down through the plane of the picture. So the blood will pass through the capillaries of the glomerulus and glomerular filtrate will be extruded out into this area here. You can see this clear area for its collection. And then we'll go down into the plane of the picture, down the nephron towards the first convoluted tubule. At higher magnification still, we can see that the gemellulus is, is indeed a very complex ball of capillaries, a very large ball of capillaries. And I think even though that there is some distortion as the slide is made, you can see the individual red cells which were in the uh, glomerulus at the time of, of death. And here the gap between the outside wall of the Bowman's capsule and the capillaries of the glomerulus it is very clearly seen. So the glomerular filtrate will be collecting in this and going down into the plane of the picture. Let's move that slightly, see what else we can see. Yeah, I think uh, here we can clearly see some uh, the walls of individual tubules. In fact, you can see here the uh, a cuboidal cell making up the tubule and the nucleus of the individual cell. The cell next door to it there, another cuboidal cell. And again the nucleus of that cell. And here we can see adjacent small blood vessels with blood cells in them. And note their proximity to the tubule, just as we drew in the diagram. So high magnification again, we can see the cells comprising the outside wall of Bowman's capsule, the capillaries of the gemellulus, and the gap into which gemellular filtrate will be extruded. Just looking around the gemellulus. See the gap all round about the glomerulus very clearly there. And again here we can see some tubules running up and down through the plane of the picture. Very clearly see the cuboidal cells of the tubules here, each with their own nucleus. And we see the adjacent capillary here capillary here to this tubule. So I think you can see that selective reabsorption can take place from here to here and tubular secretion can take place from here to here. After of course glomerular filtrate has been formed from here to here. So something of the histology of the kidney helping us to visualize and explain how it actually works. On the first part of this video we looked at normal renal function. On the second part we're going to look at an example of abnormal renal function and we're going to take the example of acute renal failure. Now acute renal failure occurs when 
there is just that. There's, there's, a, there's a failure of kidney function, a failure of renal function. 